we uh, went to uh, we went uh, through. Just gonna open up your your. Um, uh, we went through um, overloading. We explained how the functions are called, if you recall. Uh, we explained what references are, essentially. And uh, we talked about the crazy reference thingy that I showed you a function can actually act like a reference itself of something. And, uh, uh, and we showed that a reference of a reference is essentially the reference of the original value. It doesn't matter. So you can have reference of a reference of a reference of a reference of a reference. They are all the same thing. You don't have two things ever. We went down to do spool. Another thing. Uh, quiz this time, it's going to be online. Uh, it's going to be off class. It's going to be asynchronous because I had to do it for the other class. I'm going to do it with you too. So I'm going to open it up in one day probably I don't know, Friday or something. I'm going to open it up from morning to afternoon for all for both sections, and you're going to do the quiz only this time. Or maybe next time if we don't have enough time. Okay? If I if I do the, if the lecture is too take too long, take the office hours seriously. Talk to me if you have any problem. Please do so. Okay? Please do talk to me and let me take you through the thing. Uh, and that helps a lot. I'm telling you. Uh, so. Um, so again, we start with uh, IO stream. Uh, maybe I'm not going to do IO stream this time. Uh, we'll see if if um, for the other part, I think I need to. Well, we'll see. Okay. Okay. So uh, we talked about dynamic memory allocation a, a, a tiny bit. We kind of understood what dynamic memory allocation is. I'm going to assume that we didn't talk about it at all. So I'm going to, uh, we have till 125, correct? OK, good. So um, first of all, any questions on the lectures, lecture we had before? Any question? No? OK. Uh, um, how many people um, did the GitHub thingy, the workshop zero? How many people completed it? Thank you. Just wanted to. Well, lots of people actually send invitations. I'm happy, but some people send me five different invitations. I created five different repositories, and I'm a collaborator for, for all five for some reason. I don't know why. One is enough. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, we talked about dynamic memory allocation, and that mm, before we continue with this, I have to do a quick review. Of pointers from last semester from IPC 144. So, I just want to clarify something about pointers before we continue. So, um, uh, listen to this. So, um, let me bring it up, bring the slide up. It's right here. See? Where is it? Okay, there you go. Uh, I noticed helping the student, helping students, that's, uh, that the, the, the concept of pointer is somehow vague uh, for us. So I want to clear something up. First thing is that this thing that I created over here has a bug. Because <laughs> I come to uh, so this is the memory, okay? Memory starts from, from zero and goes up to the money in your pocket, how much RAM you can put on your computer, okay? So it keeps going. So I put some random number over here, that, which means this is the address, and I put two zeros. So I'm not going to put the whole thing over there. It's just this, right? And it keeps coming up to here. But the mistake I made when I put 124 over here, it is supposed to be a, another one over here and then continues here. Okay, so so now there is no 124 because 124 and immediately is 25. So my apologies on that, but assume that there is one. Okay, so forgive my mistake in that manner. So when you create a variable in your application, 
what happens is that you actually ask the compiler, and compiler is going to uh, dedicate a piece of memory to the size of the variable that you have. It's going to label it for you so you can use it. We know that, right? So if I say integer var, it creates a place for me so I can hold stuff in it, okay? That's what a variable is. Everybody's okay with that, right? Now, that variable can have a type. It could be an integer variable. It could be a double variable. It could be character. It could be float, short, long, 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 double, whatever. Any type, it gives you that much memory that you need. Are we okay with this? Okay. Now, <clears throat> there is another type of variable that has nothing to do with the variable type that puts over here. So when you say integer over here, your lit integer pointer over here, you're literally creating a variable. Integer pointer is nothing magical. It's just a variable called PTR. Exactly like var, there is some place in memory that is put over there. What is the address of var over here? What is the address of var over here? 108. Who answered? Did you answer? You, no, you answered? Okay, My, I didn't know. So 108. Thank you very much. So it's 108, right? So the var itself is sitting in address 108. PTR, although it's a pointer, it's just a variable. It's like an integer, and its address is actually 116. So a pointer, like a variable, can have an address too. There is no difference. The only difference between a, a pointer and an integer value is that integers and pointers are weird. That's all. But weird type of things they are. Like if you add one to an integer, one will be added to it. You add one to a pointer, some Number is going to be added that you're going to see later on. So one will not be added to it necessarily. Okay? So it's, it's kind of crazy. But it's nothing but an integer. Don't worry about it. So when you are creating a pointer, call it an integer pointer. Don't say integer asterisk. I mentioned that, that, mentioned that to you. So when you actually, if you say PTR is set to address of var, what you have, what that variable is uh, address that is sitting, and that's going to go in the PTR. So essentially, PTR can be another way of accessing var remotely. Why do we have pointers? Because we want to have remote control for our stuff. That's what it is. We know that each variable is in a scope. If I get out of the scope, I don't have access to that variable. What do I do? I build a remote control that holds the address of this one so I can go from far and say, change the var, change the var. With what? With PTR, okay? So when I say over here, target of PTR is equal to two, three, four, five, forget about this, Steve, add that something else. When I say target of PTR is two, three, four, five, using the remote control over there, I actually put two, three, four, five inside the variable. That's what pointers are, okay? As easy as that. And another thing that we need to know, how arrays are designed. When you actually create an array and you say integer array 5, what happens is that the uh, computer over the, 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 the compiler allocates enough memory to the size of that thing that you want. So it essentially creates five integers in the memory. How to gain access to it? It uses a remote control, like we did before. But it's in a combo. So as I, again, it's like you're going to McDonald's and say, I want combo number three. You get the chicken burger, whatever it is. I don't know. So with Coke and fries and everything. So when you say integer AR5, it's a combo. It creates five integers for you, and it creates, uh, and you, you can put values using the index for it. But the cool thing about it is that when you actually create that, it actually creates an array, a pointer for you called AR, which is the name of the array. So when you create integer AR5, it creates five integers and a pointer pointing to the beginning of them. So the action of writing integer AR5 is that. That AR over there is absolutely an integer pointer, no difference. Anything you do to an integer pointer, you can do to that, except changing it because it's constant. They don't want you to change the 
the address inside AR because if you do, you lose the array, right? So the, the value over there is going to be uh, 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 unchangeable. And that's how it works. That's how arrays work in C, plus, in C, in C and C++. Yes? Always. That's why arrays are inefficient. If, if you have 5 million integers and you want to make it 5 million and 1, you can't do it. You have to actually cre create another array of integers for 5 million and 1, then copy everything from the other one to this one and destroy the other one. So essentially, if you want to add one element to an array of 10, you need 21 memory, 21 pieces of memory for that. That's why it's inefficient. And you are going to learn later on in OOP345 that there are many different types of collections that are much more efficient than an array. An array is extremely efficient with speed. If you want the fifth element, it's right there. Speed of light, you get it. The other ones, they are more efficient in memory, but if you want the fifth element, it takes hundreds of times more time to get to it than an array. We're going to come to it soon. But that was a question you asked, so the answer for it is that. So because it's an array like that, you can actually say target of AR is 2, 3, 4, 5. Although it's an array, it doesn't matter. It's the first element. It's going to put the value in there. And if you say AR2 is 4, 4, 4, it puts it over there. And obviously, if you say target of AR plus 2 is 5, 5, 5, it's the exact same thing as the other one. So it's essentially going to overwrite that 4 to 5. Why? You are saying over here, add 2 to AR. What is AR? 108. But adding 2 to this will not add the number 2. What is the size of an integer? 4. So it's going to add two fours to it. So essentially, two fours with this one becomes 116, correct? Where is 116? Uh, that's why pointers are weird integers. When you add one to a pointer, it adds the size of the target, not only one. So if you have a double pointer and you add one to it, it adds eight to it because it wants to go to next double. If you have an employee structure and the size of the employee structure is 500, you add one to an employee structure pointer, it adds 500 to it. Why? Because it wants to go to next, did I say employee? Huh? Yeah, it's going to go to next employee, right? My short-term memory sucks. <laughs> All right, so that's what it is. So that's essentially what arrays are. We take advantage of that in our dynamic memory allocation. So show you again if I find my cursor. So, so I, I, showed you, I showed you before that instead of actually creating, instead of actually creating uh, an array like this, that everything is in our executable, we take over the, the allocation of memory. We let the program run. And after the program runs, using the new command, I request the operating system to give me those five integers somewhere in memory that I don't know where it is. And it doesn't even belong to me. So I kind of borrow it from operating system. And operating system lends it to me and gives me the address. It's like you get an apartment, and they give you the address and the key, and say, or you go into a hotel. You say, I want a room. They give you the number of the thing, and they give you a key. That's not yours. You allocate it. There is a new thing called, so you are going to the room that's yours for two weeks or one week or three days, whatever. You come out, you have to give the key back and say, I'm gone. Then they, that, that room comes back to the pool again and other people can rent it. It's the same thing over here. We have a shared memory. With this new, you are asking the operating system, temporarily give me five integers. Put the address in A. But because a, an integer is a pointer and a chunk of stuff, this works the exact same way like a regular array. You have a pointer that points to chunk of memory. You use that A exactly as you have used a regular array. There is no difference between the syntax of dynamic memory allocation, uh, dynamically allocated memory of an array, or a statically allocated memory like, uh, like a, for an array. This is statically memory uh, allocated, which means it's, it's within your executable. It won't change. This is dynamically allocated, which means you can change it anytime you want. Are we good with this? 
All right, so now let's do some programming and see how everything is done over here. So we already talked about it, and I told you that when you <coughs> think about an application and you can decide exactly how many things you want, you do not need dynamic memory allocation. Dynamic memory allocation should be avoided if you can. It's a tricky thing. You forget when the program becomes complicated, you forget to give the memory back. It's as if you leave the hotel and you forget to give the key back to the hotel and they think you're there. So that one room remains occupied even though you're not in there, in theory, okay? <laughs> so that's how it happens and we don't want that. We, and you, and if that keeps going over and over and over, if people don't give their keys back when they are going to a hotel, there will come a time that all the keys are checked out, people didn't give it back, and now all rooms are occupied. So hotel is essentially empty, but no one can use it. Okay, why? Because there is one person that forgets to give the key back. Every time it goes to a hotel, they give him a new room because they forget they got it. It takes the key, goes out, loses the key, comes back, another room, and the rooms are gone after a while. And that's, uh, as I mentioned, when you call Rogers or Bell, that internet is not working, you say, unplug the modem, wait for 15 minutes, put it back in. Essentially, they want to reboot your computer so all the junk memory that is occupied in, 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 the, in the RAM will get released so your modem can work for another three weeks. And then you have to do it again. So next time before calling, do the reboot and see what happens, okay? Uh, we're okay with this? Okay, so, so now, uh, going back to the, to, to the thing that I told you, like if I told you, uh, <clears throat> write a program that finds the largest number between five billion num integers. You don't need dynamic memory allocation because you want to find the largest number, right? You simply put one number over there, you read the first one, then you compare it with the rest that you're reading as you are going. If you see the one that you're reading is bigger than what you have, you keep that one and you keep reading. You don't need to store anything. Just so one integer, and that's going to be the bigger value. So five million, three, five billion, it doesn't make any difference. Finding the maximum does not need dynamic memory allocation. But if I told you I'm going to give you uh, an integer array and I want you to display it to me in ascending order, then you have to keep every single entry because you have to reorder it and redisplay the whole thing. Or if I told you I have a statistical data in a file and I don't know how many integers are in the file. And these are readings of the, I don't know, temperature of the ocean that, that is done through the thing and there are like five million numbers from all over the world. And I want you to sort it for me. So you are, now you don't know how many things I have. I don't know. And I have to sort it back and put it in a file. That's when I need dynamic memory allocation. I have to first see what is the size of the file. Then I have to say, okay, if the file is like 8,000 and a double is eight, then I'm going to divide it by eight, so now I have 1,000 doubles in there. But that's just an example, okay? And then you know how much you need and you occupy that much. Or <coughs> you don't know how many is, is there. You say, I'm going to get 100, so you allocate 100. You read, as soon as you see you reach 100, you say, oh, I have more. What you do, you make a 200 one this time. You copy everything, you destroy the, the other one, it's, it's, it's dynamic, right? It's like a bucket is full, now I need more, you put, get a bigger bucket. You empty this one and that one, throw the other one away, and now I have a bigger bucket. And you keep filling it, it's full, now you get a barrel. You put that one in a barrel, you throw this one away. And you keep making it bigger until you can carry everything. So this is dynamic memory allocation. The most important thing you need to do is to throw away that bucket. If you don't throw away that bucket, you're going to end up having your room filled with buckets everywhere that you cannot move anymore. And that's memory leak. Okay? So this is what we're going to do. <clears throat> now I'm going to, again, we had that example. I'm going to do it again. I think I did it over here, saying that uh, read few integers from, uh, uh, read a uh, few integers from entry and uh, show it in reverse order. Okay? Read few numbers from, get few numbers from user and show it in reverse order. And I'm not gonna, and you're gonna say, <clears throat> how many? I'm gonna say, I don't know. Ask the user. When can you ask the user? User is not there when you're programming. User is there when you are, your program is running. 
Because of that, you have to have dynamic memory allocation. There is no way. So the very first thing that you need to do over there is to say, OK, I have an integer num that is supposed to be the number of <coughs> things that I have. By the way, this uh, curly bracket, empty curly bracket in front of a variable is a universal way of making it null. OK? So when I do like that, it's like num is equal to 0 or whatever the default value for it is. So you can put that in front of an array. You can put that in front of an employee. You can put that in front of anything. That's a new thing in C++. When I say new, it means last 15 years. <laughs> OK, so, <coughs> so you do like that. So that means num is 0. OK, that means num is 0. It means that essentially means integer num is equal to 0. OK, now <coughs> I need to have an array of, of numbers. And I don't know how many, right? So I'm going to create an integer pointer for the array integer pointer array, and I'm going to make that one null too. See, universal. Or you can say integer, that's initialization. You cannot say array is equal to that. You can't do that. If you want to set it separately, you have to say null PTR, OK? So to set it, you say null, but initialization, that's universal, OK? So that's the universal way of uh, initializing it to 0. <coughs> So I'm going to say same as OK, they're the same. So now I have a pointer and it's empty. Now I can ask the user, hey, how many integers do you have? How many numbers are you going to enter? OK, so and I'm, we are hoping that this is that the user is not dumb which never happens. The stupidest person in Earth is the person working with your program. You have to assume it that way, OK? But in this case, we are thinking that the person is intelligent and they're not going to make a mistake. So when you say 10, they're going to write 10, not T-E-N, OK? So be aware of that, OK? So in here, I'm going to say, uh, see out <coughs> how many integers, how many numbers, OK? Or I'm just going to put it like that. <clears throat> then in here, I'm going to say CN num. So I'm reading how many integers users want, user wants. I have num integers. Users say I have 25, 3, 9 million, whatever. We don't care. Whatever they say, we say we are good. So what it does, we say over here, <coughs> uh, uh, now that I know how many they have, I'm going to say array is equal to new integer num. That is requesting OS. This is requesting OS for num integers in heap. OK? If the operating system had that much space, it's going to give you the address. So num will carry the address of the places that, uh, that you want. So it essentially becomes a valid array to use, OK? And if it doesn't have it, what should it return? What is an, a pointer that is invalid and cannot be used? A pointer that has, a pointer that has, unused pointers are set to what? No. So if operating system cannot give you that much memory, it's too big of a memory, your computer doesn't have enough memory, then it's going to return null. So, so you, you can always test it. You can say if array, you can play, do it like kindergarten, say null PTR. Then you're going to say, um, see how not enough memory. Uh, yeah, not enough memory. And don't try it. Don't, don't do something like this and put 5 million and see what happens. Because your computer caches the stuff into hard drive, don't do that. So, so no matter how much you want, your computer has enough memory these days. Yeah, if it was like 25 years ago, you could have made that thing fail. Now it's very difficult to do so, unless you are working on a microcomputer. So else, at this point, it means I have memory, right? It means I have my memory at this point, correct? So in this else, it means everything's good, keep going, right? So in here is everything good, good, 
keep going. So what do I do in this scenario? As soon as I get to this scenario, I'm going to say delete array, not to forget. If I don't, I have memory leak. So I'm going to put it at the bottom, let it be, because when I'm done, I want my array to be gone. OK, so I'm playing it safe. <clears throat> right at the beginning, I'm going to say wipe it out. Then I'm going to start coding. Now I know how many integers I have. I have an array that is valid. It has enough values. I can actually ask the user to enter the numbers. So in here, I'm going to say, see out, <clears throat> please enter num integer values. OK? And, and I'm going to go to new line, because there are many. Now I have to do repetition. So now I have to keep going over and over and over. How many times? Num times, right? I have to go num times so everybody knows. These are formulas that you know in your mind. You don't need to think about it. You simply say for integer i set to 0, i less than uh, <coughs> num, and i plus plus. And because uh, I, I'm going to use that i later, so uh, what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to create it right over here. So I'm going to say integer i. Because I want to use that again for some, to print it in reverse order. Now, what is the scope of i in here? The scope of i is a block scope. The scope of i is a block scope. It means it only exists in the else part of if statement. After that else part is done, poof. I will vanish, but we don't need it anyway, so that's the place we're going to put it in. All right? So now I'm going to say C out. I'm going to actually show uh, the row number so they know which one it is. It's I plus 1 because it's from start from 0. I don't, the users don't understand 0. They, they like to see 1 first. So I'm going to show actually which one they are entering, and now I'm going to go C in into the array element I. And I know for a fact it's there because our operating system gave me the address. It's a non-null value. I have exactly num values over here. There is no way that I'm going to get any problem, get into any problem. And now <clears throat> I can actually show them in reverse order if I want to. So I'm going to say C out values in reverse. New line, and then I'm going to print everything and keep going like that. So I'm going to say four, I set to, last element is num minus one. We know that. Index 10, last element is nine, right? And I'm going to say <coughs> now. OK, now I'm going to say I greater than or equal to zero, the last valid value I can have for an index. Now I'm going to say I minus minus. So that's going to go reverse. And in here, I'm going to say C out array num and uh, I'm just going to put a space so they don't get mixed up with each other and at the end I'm going to go to new line and then it's going to get deleted therefore this dynamic program now works with any size of arrays that I want okay a huge challenge for you at home huge challenge very difficult to do with the knowledge that we have currently is to remove that request and make it work. If you can do that now, wow, I'll be happy. I know who are the stars of the, of the thing, right? Just don't think about it now. Listen to the next of the, the rest of the lecture. But if you just can remove this one, so you don't ask how many numbers. You're just going to keep going and going and going. And as the numbers grow, you resize your memory and make it bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes, right? Remember the buckets and a thing? OK? <coughs> Anyways. So now if I run the program, I'm just going to run step by step over here to see how it works. <coughs> Essentially, what happens is that the program runs with uh, the values in here, num being 0, obviously, array being 0, because I uh, universally set it to null. Now I'm going to ask how many numbers, and I'm going to ask the user to actually enter it. And user is going to say 4, and hits the enter. 
Okay? So now it's going to ask the operating system to give me four integers and put the address in the array. Operating system is going to give it to me, and as you see, there is a valid address of 9167C0 in RAM for me. And that's where my four integers start in memory. So what I'll do, I'm going to say, oh, obviously it is not no, so I'm going to say, please integer four integer values. And I display the row number, one. And the user will keep adding and going over there. I'm not going to go that step by step, so I'm going to say run to cursor. So it goes right down to this point. Now I'm going to say 10, 20, 30, and 40, and it stops. I got exactly four to the number of integers I allocated, and after that I'm going to say values in reverse, and obviously I am going to <coughs> start from 3 and go, what's my mistake? Why didn't it print it? What did I do wrong? Debugging time. It was supposed to print 40, but it print, printed garbage. I, yes, thank you, 1% midterm, okay? <clears throat> so, yeah, I made the mistake, I put num over here. Num is exactly out of the memory that I, num is four, right? Which means index five. So you see, I go one out of my memory and it's garbage, right? So I made a mistake, let's fix it. I'm gonna stop, and I'm gonna put over here z I, and run it again. I'm going to come right down to here. <coughs> uh, run to cursor. That right there to this new line. Hopefully it's going to get that. How many numbers? So that's going to be 4 and 10, 20, 30, and 40. And it's going to show the values in reverse. And now it's going to delete the numbers for me. So when I come over here, now that I'm done with it, the array that you see that it's actually the first value is 10, as you see over here, as soon as delete happens, that array is all garbage, okay? So <clears throat> obsessively for now, it would be a good idea. I know later on I'm gonna actually give you messages of why did you do that, but obsessively set you the pointer you delete to null to just get used to it. So as soon as you delete something, afterwards say array is null PTR. M make sure to get you flag it that this this is not used anymore. This is extremely important. Obsessively do it for now. Until you gain to go to the amount of knowledge that you know when you don't need to make it null and when you do. Okay? For now, you delete, you make it null. Are we good? Are we okay? Are we okay? One? Are we okay? Why are you laughing? <laughs> I say, are you good? He goes, <laughs> <laughs> it means imagine. So, <clears throat> are we okay? Next one is going to be tough. So, if you have any questions, let me know. Because I'm just going to immediately jump to another one, and I'm going to print names in reverse order. Okay? Are we good? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So, <clears throat> all right. What's the time? 12.45. I am done in 1.25. That gives me 1.25, right? Um, that gives me 40 minutes. Anybody wants to take a break before we put your brains in a blender? Okay. All right. Break. Uh, five minutes. I don't know. Do something. Look at the ceiling. Go wash your face. Uh, what I want to do now, as you see over here, I have a struct name. I have a struct name, and in this struct name of mine, I have a first and a last name, okay? So, um, I want to ask the user how many names. User enters the name for me, and I keep uh, getting the name, and I'm going to print them. Well, because we don't still know using CEN how to accept spaces, I'm going to use this with standard input output. 
So I'm going to change this to CSTDIO, okay? Because we still don't know how to get uh, uh, names with spaces. Okay, we cannot get strings with spaces. If you have a space, it stops. I don't want it to stop, okay? So that's why uh, I'm going to do it with CSTDIO, uh, but later we learn how, when we learn how to do it with CN, then uh, we can switch everything. So I want to get, not, and so this is kind of a double, uh, kind of a double, um, what should I call it, uh, dynamic memory allocation thingy. What do I mean is that, when, let me see if I can make it work in here. So I want an array of names. So essentially, there are going to be an array of names like this. Okay, so this is a dynamic array that we have. So this is the array of names. The problem is that this array of names of ours, let's say I have over here a few names. The problem is that each name of, of, of mine is dynamic too. So not only this array is dynamic, but also each name by itself, it has two dynamic thingies over here. And these two dynamic thingies are pointing to first name and last name of each person somewhere else. So it's a dynamic in dynamic situation type of a thing. So if I allocate, if, I, if somebody tells me I have four names, I can allocate this one, but each name needs to have its own allocation. And if the program is over and I deallocate the name, I'm going to have gazillion memory leaks because each name has its own dynamic memory allocation. So before doing that, I have to wipe out all the names. So the first names and last names that you see over here, so essentially it's going to be something like this. So, so not like that. It's going to be some. So this is first name, last name, first name, last name, first name, last name, first name, last name. First name, last name. So bottom top design. To have something like this, the very first thing I need to do is to be able to dynamically allocate somebody's name and put it in there. That's numero uno, first, right? After that, I'm going to apply that for first and last. So I'm going to call it twice to get the first name and last name to get one single name. Now that I can do a dynamic one single name, I'm going to write a code to deallocate that one single name. So I need to be able to create a single name, deallocate a single name. When I'm done, now I can get an array of million names and just put that thing in a loop and I'm done. Okay? Bottom top design. So what do I do in here? This is what I'm going to do. First, I need to be able to dynamically read a character string and return the value out. For that, I write a function. So I'm going to say over here, what am I going to say? I'm going to say, uh, first of all, I have to read it from the memory, dynamically allocate memory for it, put it in it, send it out to user, send the address back to user, exactly like new command. So what I need to do is to pass an address with my function, have a character pointer returned. And this one is going to read a dynamic string for me, dynamic C string for me. And I may want to show a prompt before that. I want to show please enter this and get a dynamic string. By the way, all these things you can use later on. Any code that you see, you can reuse, OK? So in here, I'm going to say constant character pointer prompt. So if I want to show a prompt, I'm going to let the user do it. But I'm going to also, but I'm going to allow the user to ignore it. How do I do that? I put a default value for it for null PTR. So in my dynamic read, I'll check. 
if they didn't pass anything as an argument, probably be null, right? So I'm not going to show anything. But if I see something's coming in, then I'm going to display it. So that's the prompt. So they can use my function in two different ways. All right? Now I want to write the code for it. Because I'm lazy, I'm going to click on the screwdriver over here. And I'm going to say create definition in utils.cpp. And poof, I have it in there. OK? So that's, uh, I have to fix my automatic thingy to put the curly bracket over here. I hate it to be underneath. Uh, it's not because it's better, because I've been programming like that since I was two years old. So I don't want to, OK. So this is the, 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 the section that is open over here is actually utils.cpp down here. It kind of opens it. You've done this before. Anybody done this before? No? So you can do this. Or I can just save it, close it, and get out, and open, open utils.cpp because it's there now. You see that? Right there. So how do I do it? And as you see, it's smart enough to remove the default value for it. Because the default values are only for prototypes. Remember that? So <clears throat> how do I do that? First of all, I have to see if the prompt is null or not, to show it to a user or not. So I'm going to say if prompt exists, I'm going to use, since I'm using uh, um, include, since I'm using uh, C, uh, stdio, uh, that's what I'm going to do. So uh, C, stdio. So in here, I'm going to say, if that's the case, printf prompt. Any problem with that? Anybody have this problem with this line of code? Why didn't I write a format string over there? Why didn't I say double quote percent s? That's the question, right? Why did I do that? Why didn't I write this? Why didn't I write? This, correct? Everybody's saying, why didn't you do that, right? Correct? I have a question. Yes. No. No. The reason is that if I did this, would everybody object? Why? It says, hello. It's printing. It's going to print, right? You can print a string, right? You can do that. There's no problem with this. Everybody's OK with this? So didn't I tell you just that's a constant character string? What's the difference? Prompt is a character string, right? Is it, isn't this a constant character string? Isn't this a constant character pointer? So what's the difference, prompt is that or that? If you are printing just a string, just put the string. You don't need to put a format specifier for it. OK, people are looking at me like I'm nuts. OK, let me, let me do this. Just to show you what I mean. OK, I'm going to put the prompt. I'm just going to write a single piece of code over here, and I want you to tell me what is the output of this. So what happens if I go? Uh, if I do this, if I say, character ch is equal to, and if I say over here, because I'm using that one, I'm going to say printf percent C, and in here I'm going to say CH. Can I do something like this? Of course I can. Didn't I tell you that, the ca that an array is essentially a pointer pointing to a piece of memory? This is a, this is a character array, correct? So essentially double code is the address of it. So the address of beginning of hello, two further, 0, 1, 2, L will go to CH. It's an array. What's the difference? Like it's, like it's as simple. Oh, let, me do, let me do it like this. If I did it like this, would anybody object if I say over here, character um, SDR 
is set to hello. Anybody would have problem with this? Didn't you just say str is equal to hello? So str or hello, they are the same. You can put hello instead. You just said str is hello, didn't you? So put hello here, what's the difference? They are the same, you just said they are the same two seconds ago, right? Okay, so we don't, so if I pass a string to printf or pass a string to printf, what's the difference? They're both strings. Because I'm not putting any format in it, I can do it. You want me to run it to see how it works? No? No. Anyways, do it at home. All right, so back in business. So I'm printing the prompt. So um, I'm printing the prompt. Now that I printed the prompt, I want to actually get the name from the user. How big name of a user can be? Like the biggest name in the world. What do you think it's going to be? I had, I had a student, Nirantaru Narit Nara Karaja. That was the name. I was like big. That was the biggest thing that I ever remember. I always, like, she's one of my best friends now. But, but what I'm saying is that, like, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so big names. Tell me. 30? Okay, so we go 300. Okay? So that's, that's how you do it. See? Because if you go 30, no, let's make it 35 to be sure. Believe me, it's got to be, you're going to find somebody with like nine different names back to back. So if you say 30, you go 10 times more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some big chunk over here. But there is no worry. I'm not wasting space. It's just an automatic variable. After the function is gone, it's going to be gone. It's going to be destroyed and gone. So what I need to do over here, I'm going to say character name or, or str 300. Okay, something like that. And in here, I'm going to say uh, character pointer return, what, I, what I'm about to return. I'm going to set it to null. Okay, are we good down to this point? Okay, now what I'm going to say over here is, what do I do? I receive a name, right? So I need a C string for string header file stuff. In the utils of workshop two, I am giving you the string header files code that I have written. So you don't need to include it, okay? SDR LAN, SDR copy, all those things are there, the code. Use those, please. It's you, right? Or three, four, five. It's you. It's you. I think it's there. Anyway, so so what I need to do is now get the name. So I'm so so I'm gonna say if prompt is gonna show the prompt. Now I'm gonna say scanf as percent up to uh, backslash n. Right? So go up to backslash n, read the name, and it's got to be maximum of 300 characters, not more than that. Right? And put it in SDR. All right. So now I'm reading it. So if the scanf returns one, it means actually the number of stuff that are read is less than 300 characters. The user didn't. Put too many things, scan of yada yada, that's correct, right? Yeah. So if, if, if actually the value is read and it's properly done, now I'm going to allocate memory for the exact size. How, what do I do? I'm going to say ret is equal to new character, how long? str len of the string plus one for null. Now I have the exact size that I want for the name. If the name is Lee, L-E, L-double-E, -E, it's going to be four characters. It's going to be my name, Fardad, Sully Manlu. It's going to be something big. I have no idea how many characters. But whatever it is, it's going to be that much. And if it doesn't get it properly, it's going to uh, actually uh, return the uh, annul because it, uh, dynamic memory is not going to happen. Now I can actually copy the value in it. So I'm going to say SDR copy into the return value, the thing that I just read. And that's going to be returned. Obviously, over here, I have to flush the keyboard. Right? I didn't write it. I'm going to write it. So flush keyboard. So I'm going to say void flush key. And in this flush keyboard, I'm going to say while 
yet char is not equal to backslash n. And that's the flush key. So it's going to keep getting character until it flushes the key. And why it's not accepting it? Oh, tsh, false key. OK. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to put this thing over here so I can use it later on if I want to. Obviously, we're going to change all these things to see in and see out later on. But what we want to learn dynamic memory allocation today. OK? So now this utils of mine will this uh, get uh, read dynamic string of mine will receive uh, a name up to 300 characters, resize it to the size needed, put the value in it, and return it. We will not delete it. The person who's using ours because it's dynamic is responsible to delete it, not us. Now I have the means to read a name. I can actually show the values and read the name if I want to. So the tool is written for it, OK? <clears throat> Next thing I want to do over here, I'm going to save this. I'm going to come back over here. Now let's read the name. So if I want to read the name, I'm going to say over here void read name. And in here, I'm going to say name reference n. And how do I read it? I'm going to say, what do I say? I'm going to say uh, n dot m first is set to, uh, I'm going to make this one Boolean. Make sure to return true. Return, uh, I'm going to say Boolean red. OK. Uh, set it to false. Let's be pessimistic. Now I'm going to say <coughs> that's boo, too scary. OK, boo. OK, uh, I'm going to say read dynamic string, and I'm going to say first name. Right? So it's going to get the first name and return it to me. Right? The next thing over here is that n.m last read dynamic c string last name. It's going to read the last name and send it to me. Now I have to make sure that it's actually correctly done. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say ret is equal to n dot m first and n dot m last. What does it mean? If they are both not null, ret will be true. Correct? If they are both not null, ret will be true. Otherwise, ret will be false if one of them is false, right? And then in here, I'm going to say return ret. You will see that right now, I just created a mem possible memory leak. That's why it's so tough. Let's say one of them failed and the other one did not. What's going to happen? One is going to be null, the other one is not. Ret is going to be false, correct? So it returns false, and I would say it was unsuccessful, so I don't need to delete anything, right? But one of them did go through, right? So I, that's, that's the difficulty of writing dynamic memory allocation. You have to think every single aspect of the application running. So in here, I have to say, if not ret, OK? Now what I need to do, delete them both. Delete n dot m first. Delete n dot m last. Deleting a null pointer will not do anything. No harm done. If something is null, delete won't do anything. But if it's not, it will delete. So now. The code is written, and it seems like there is no memory leak. I can read a name, and I return true or false if the read was successful. OK? Probably I'm not going to use it for the tab, but I'm just trying to write it as detailish as possible. So first, I dynamically read the name. How? I don't care. I've solved it before. I'm not going to think about it anymore. That's how you do it. You don't think about the code you have written. Later on, you're going to debug. Of course, in reality, you as a student, when you write it, you don't start coding the name now. After you finish your read dynamic C string, you write the unit test for it. 
you write a main for it, you create things, you start doing things, walk through it, make sure it works before you go to the next step. Okay? But after you've done and tested and make sure everything's okay, you forget about it. Don't use your brain cells to remember what this did. Trust yourself that it's going to work properly. Have you ever trusted if printf works properly before you, when you are printing something? No, it just works. It's a function somebody else wrote. Functions you write, you have to treat it, treat it that way so you can solve the next step with a clear mind. You make your problem smaller and smaller as you program. Okay? So I am dynamically reading the first. If it's successful, I'll get the address. If it's not, I'll get no. For both of them, now in here I'm going to say see if it's successful or not. If it's not, delete them both to make sure there is no memory leak. When I look at the code, it's ugly. Do a ret, do this, do what? This is crazy because I was thinking and I writing it. I was writing it. Now I'm going to do it better. I'm going to say instead of writing it like this, that if statement is cryptic. In here, I'm going to bring these two and I'm going to say copy. And I'm going to put it over here. This means success, right? So in here, I can say if not this, which means if it wasn't successful, delete, and I'm going to say red is false. Now I'm going to make it optimistic. That makes it a little more clear. So I'm going to say everything's true. If they are not both, if they are both, uh, if they are both not null, this won't happen, and return true. If it is, then so on and so forth. Okay. <coughs> Again, you can write it in many different ways. Like if if this is too cryptic for you, then you can actually do it like this. You can remove it and say if they are both not null, ret is true. Else, your choice. Come up with a solution that suits you best so you can understand it. And don't initialize red to anything over here. Or just do like this to make sure that compiler doesn't nag. OK? See what suits you best. Do it that way. Now I'm saying if they are both not null, everything's good, return. If something's wrong, and this is how you comment. Don't write the story of your life. Read name gets sent. Don't do that. In here, you just say EMA success, EMA failed. That's the comment I want to see. Done. So we can see actually what happened. Dynamic memory allocation success, dynamic memory allocation failed. All right? So now I have something that is reading a name. Beautiful. So name is being read. I have that one. Deleting name is just to, to those two things. I'm a little cuckoo. If, I, if it was me, I would have actually written a, a function to delete the contents of name instead of writing those two names. But you can just write the two lines. Okay? I would put these two in a function, and I'm going to say free name or okay, something like that. But forget about it. So for now, I have the read name, and all the, so I can actually read the name, and everything's good. Now let's see. We can actually write the code for uh, reading as many names as we want and print them in reverse order, whatever we wanted to. Oh, how about displaying a name? Let's do that too. Let's display the name. So void display. And that shows that still I am a C programmer because I call that read name. When somebody writes something like this, you know they have a C background. Because we have polymorphism in C, line, in C++. Read is a read. The, uh, uh, the, the, the prototype is telling you what is, what is it reading. Why you are calling it read name? Read is fine. Read name, right? Same thing over here. So in here, display. I'm going to say display. I'm going to display a name. Obviously, it's going to be a constant name reference because I don't want to change it. I just want, I just want to display it. So I'm going to go printf. Percent %s, percent %s, in here it's going to be n dot first and n dot last, and that's going to show the name. So that's printing the displaying the name. All right? And we may want to go to new line, are we? No, display name doesn't say go to new line. 
I'll go anyway. Okay? Now let's write the code. What I want to write? 200 things to see how many things I want and print it in reverse order. But I've written something like that before, didn't I? Let's see. I wrote something in here that did the same thing, right? Let me just reuse my code. To just show you, as I told you, logic is the same. You just have to apply it to new things. Int main, I am getting integer arrays, correct? Instead of int is name. So I have an array, pointer of array of names. How many names? And instead of C out, I'm going to say printf because I am now doing using printf. So how many names? OK. And then in here, I'm going to say scanf percent %d and address of num, right? Now I'm going to say array is equal to new name. If array is null pointer, printf, not enough memory, and go to new line. Everything good? Keep going. I, then I'm going to say over here, printf. Please enter percent %d, integer values, and I'm going to put over here num. Now I'm going to start from i, and in here I'm going to say printf. Remember? <laughs> OK. Now I'm going to say over here printf percent %d and i plus 1. In here, I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to say scanf. I wrote a function for it, read. I'm going to say read array i. My read is getting a name, right? I just wrote the function for it. So it's reading my uh, name. I'm not going to get the result because I know it's not going to fail. Okay, But if you want to write a proper thing, you have to say, if that is, I'm not going to do that. Now I'm going to say over here, printf, values in reverse. I'm going to go to new line because I want to show it uh, in lines. Now in here, I'm going to go display array i. And delete the array. Done. I didn't change any logic. It's the same thing as my integer, but I'm just reading names instead. And because the mechanism inside the name is done, this problem only has, this array only has, this code only has one problem. And that one problem is that I only deleted this. All the dynamic memory for names remain. So reusing your code, you have to be careful. It looks like, yay, I did it. And when you run it, it works actually. It's going to work perfectly. But when you put it on matrix, going through Valgren, you're going to see it's going to say, these many blocks of memory are lost. So you know you made a boo-boo. So to fix this problem, before deleting the array, I need to wipe everything up. So I have to write another loop over here, exactly like this display thingy that I've done. Doesn't matter if it's reverse, it still works. The only difference is that I have to say delete array i dot m first, m last. Now I don't have memory leak. So this is the only thing that had to be added because I have these little things that I have to wipe out. So what happens? It deletes these two, these two, these two, these two, these two. And when it's done, it deletes the center. And voila, everything is back to memory. Yes. Then it's not print out anymore. It's print and delete. I know, you can just delete it. That's not a stupid thing to do. That's not a stupid, I just wanted to separate the stages. One of the most important things, that's why I said, like, if I would have written this thing, like, if I write this thing, 
Okay, um, let me clear something up. What you, what, so the, the suggestion was, why not putting line 49 and 50 between 46 and 47, just ignore the loop? Display and wipe it out, and then delete the whole thing. Would have done the same thing, correct? But then you didn't have stages. In here, I have reading stage, printing in reverse, deleting, wiping out the memory. Then over here, you had reading, displaying, and deleting. That doesn't make sense. Usually, these type of things are all modularized. Like, I would, switch, I would never write a program like this ever in reality. In reality, this for loop is going to be in a function called read names. And I'm going to pass it, pass the information to a function. Function will fill up the, the, the main for me. This one is going to be display in reverse, another function being called. And this one is going to be delete content. And this one, I don't need to because it's just one statement. But get used to put it in functions. Although I understand the program is smaller, but the, it, and it was absolutely right 50 years ago. Now our computers are vast. My cell phone is more powerful than a supercomputer in CIA 50 years ago. Okay? So make your code in a way that is easily maintained. That's our target. No program is done and finished and it's bugless when you're doing it. Make it readable and easy to maintain. And that's the goal. But bravo. That was a good point. Are we okay with this? All right. I wanted to run it. I have three minutes to run it, and the other person is going to come in. So uh, I'm just going to quickly run it and put two names over there. If it fails, oh, I got error. So I'm going to fix the errors. And uh, oh, it's no secure, secure thingy. Uh, yeah, the other prof is going to be here. Uh, I'll test it, uh, make sure everything's good. You test it at home and run it and see if it works or not. Yes. I just did it. I just did it. I just did it. Where is it? Uh, here. Name is a struct. It's even cooler than what you were saying. It's not only dynamically allocating the struct, but I'm allocating inside the structures too at the same time. Remember that picture that I drew. Guys, remember how, how you're supposed, I'm going to fix the errors, and I'm going to post the code. Your job is to look at what I have written, execute it, learn it, put it aside, write it from scratch by yourself, not looking at my code. See if you can do it successfully. If it's not successful, set your code aside. Don't look at it. Look at mine, try to learn and see how it works again. Put mine aside, debug yours. Don't put it side by side and compare and see what you haven't done. You wouldn't learn anything. Set, learn my code, set it aside, do it from memory. That commits it to your long-term memory. Copying and pasting won't do anything, okay? Please. Have a beautiful day. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll fix it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I submit my workshop for this? I have bugs. Did you uh, request for? Did you request for? Uh, for extension? No. You have to request for extension. This time I'll accept it if it's late. Okay. But uh, next you have to do it. I'll submit it by today. You have to. S Ask for sub uh, extension, then I'll fix it for you. Okay. Then I'll give you extension, I'll do it. But next time it has to be done before due date. Okay.